Hello, this is Justin Higgins, and today I'm going to talk about what happened to a flashlight that I had kept in my trunk for about five years for emergencies. I only really used it three or four times, and never in the last two years. When I went to get my flashlight out, and it was a fairly expensive flashlight when I bought it, 30 or 40 bucks, what I found was this. I had just tons of corrosion all over the batteries. You can see I took one of them out. And what I found was is that uh, it's broken. But it made me wonder why why does bat why do batteries go bad uh, and why do they corrode? Why do they corrode like this? What is this white powder stuff uh, all over my batteries? So I am filming this in a slightly different manner than the other videos that you may have seen previously in this series. I'm gearing up to filming a whole bunch of series of videos to teach people general ideas of science, but we're talking about batteries today, and I went ahead and made this presentation to show you why batteries uh, corrode and go bad. So batteries are really pervasive in our society. You have here a picture of a whole bunch of alkaline type batteries, and I believe one of these is a lithium ion battery, uh, this type battery right here that you see is the type of battery that you get in a camera, like the one that I usually use to film with, and those are lithium type batteries, but they all kind of function in the same way. Now, a dry cell battery, that's the type of battery that we buy at the store. Uh, typically, this is an alkaline. Here's a picture of a lovely Duracell battery, and there's a couple of parts of these batteries that make them work. So, there's an anode, which is on the side that gives electrons and usually on an alkaline battery that's going to be the black side and then you have that copper side that is the cathode and that's where the battery accepts electrons and so the electrons want to flow between the anode and travel down along towards the cathode and when you complete that connection that's what makes the battery work now, if you leave a battery out in the air, this reaction still takes place. It slowly, the electrons will flow through the air, usually it's the, because of the moisture. If you live in a more high moist environment, like near the equator, lots of rain, etc., this will happen faster. If you live in the desert, it'll take a lot less time. And so those electrons do float well, not really flow, but they transfer along from the anode to the cathode. And that's why in a typical shelf life for an alkaline battery is about seven years, because it will eventually discharge itself from the anode to the cathode over that time. And that's why they die. Now, the purpose of this video was that I discovered a bunch of corroded batteries. Here's a really corroded battery that I found on the internet. Uh, all these images are Creative Commons. And to discover why this happens, you have to understand that there's two basic parts inside the battery. There's a zinc mixture in the anode. There's some sort of zinc molecules that are usually wrapped up about, around a bunch of cardboard. Um, and that is going to give electrons to the other side, and this is proprietary for the different types of brands. It's either using a potassium or a magnesium mixture that will perform the reaction that allows the electrons to transfer. And then you have these metal caps, and they would have been pressed onto the battery on either side, and that's where the problem lies is in those caps. Those caps have tiny, tiny little gaps in them. And if the connection from the anode to the cathode is even partially complete, even if the connection's not turned on, the battery will leak out of those caps. And so with the metal connection, this happens too, as you saw in my battery early, in my uh, uh, flashlight earlier. And so it leaks as long as there's some sort of connection complete. Now, that can happen through the air, but most likely that's going to happen while the battery has some sort of metal connection that is slightly completing the circuit, even though the battery's not being used. And so these toxins are produced, these toxic clouds of oxides that just kind of 
form on the ends of the battery. And so that's what we saw before. We've got a bunch of cloud of a toxic oxide, oxide, probably a potassium compound or a magnesium compound. You don't want to eat it because it's poison. And then that got me to thinking about how lithium batteries work. And I've seen some pictures of videos and videos on the internet of lithium batteries exploding. And then there's this image. This happens because the lithium cells have a little bit more liquid in them than the alkaline type batteries, the ones that you would use in a child's toy. And if you were to drop it, it punctures little holes inside of the bag and it starts to oxid oxidize the same thing that happens with an alkaline battery but it happens in the bag so after peering more closely at my dead flashlight uh the corrosion has gotten completely inside so it's completely dead i can't use it anymore i keep a bucket around my house that i put dead batteries in so that they can be recycled because you shouldn't put them in a landfill so into the bucket goes $40 down the drain. Next time, I think I'll just pick up a $2 flashlight from the gas station. That way I won't feel as bad when it goes horribly, horribly wrong. This has been Justin Higgins, and thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully, I'll be back on Sunday or Wednesday with some more science fun videos. And remember that science is in everything.